There are very few Bible topics that garner more discussion and debate than the question of free moral agency of man versus the will and purpose of God. Consider these questions. Is man truly a free moral agent in the absolute sense? In other words, does man have a true choice, a real and meaningful ability to accept or to reject the eternal life that God offers? Does God offer a meaningful opportunity for every person of the human race to choose the gift of eternal life that he offers? And does he offer it to all without discrimination? Does God have a will? And is it ultimately God's sovereign will and purpose that in the end will prevail above all else? When mankind fell from eternal life in the Garden of Eden by sin, God made a way back through the shed blood of an innocent one. And now by the atonement of God's Son, Christ Jesus, we can answer with a resounding yes to all of the questions we have just presented. All of God's creation is precious to Him, and He takes no pleasure in the death or destruction of any of His handiwork. Mankind certainly cannot save himself, nor grant himself eternal life. And furthermore, the scriptures make very clear that no man can come to God, except God draws him by His Spirit. The gospel of Jesus Christ, which means good news, is that God gave His Son for the sin of the whole world, that whosoever believes on Him with all their heart will not perish but have everlasting life. Whether by direct lineage to God, as was Adam, or by obedience to God's Word, as was offered to Cain, all mankind have an opportunity to come or be granted eternal life. May this article on election thrill your hearts as you realize the care that God has for all mankind. No other writer in the Bible contributed more to us on this subject of election than the Apostle Paul. It is truly a complex subject with many facets and truths that are sometimes hard to be understood, and at times can seem to be at odds with fair thinking from a human perspective. And let us remember the admonition of the Apostle Peter as he relates in the third chapter of his second epistle. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen.